this shouldn't be allowed. Somebody said they should be fined. Another guy said they should be suspended for a certain amount of time. Like, What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fancy Fitness. So is Nick Walker gonna be there in Las Vegas for this year's Olympia weekend? Well, I guess he will be there for his sponsors. And he just posted this on his IG story just a few hours ago. So more and more voices are being raised in the bodybuilding community regarding this whole Nick Walker situation. And if this topic continues to trend like this, Nick Walker might end up getting a penalty because the more you think about it, the more you realize that the way they handled this whole situation with Matt Jensen coming out, giving us just one reason that he isn't just ready for the Olympia this year, the more people are frustrated. You can't compete for a year. I'm like, that's not a bad idea. If you, if you drop out of the Olympia, you can't do the next year of the Olympia. I agree with you that there needs to be ramifications because this is a very scary precedent to set in professional bodybuilding. Because going by this logic, it seems like all they did was to pull out of this year's Olympia simply because Nick Walker wasn't going to make top 5 as everyone was already predicting. And just like the way Sean Ray said, that the way Nick Walker pulled out just a week out of the Olympia, that sets a very dangerous precedent for all of these other guys to pull out of the biggest show of the year, like the Arnold or the Olympia, simply because they think they aren't gonna place high enough. So both Ian Valier and Father Bad agreed on the fact that there should be some penalty to avoid this from happening in the future once and for all. Yep. If we start letting guys drop out from the Olympia, like look, we're signing Olympia contracts by like the minimum, <laughs> like the latest of like July, August. Now I know some people are gonna say that Fouad has a personal vendetta against Nick Walker because he left his company. So I'm gonna put that part here also, where Fouad Dubat actually defended Nick Walker, especially when it comes to Nick Walker's work ethic, his diet, his training, his sleep cycle, and following that plan laid out by his coach to the dot. Powerhouse boy says Nick is eating too much and not doing enough cardio. It's simple. And it, that's absolutely not the case. No, I, I think it's, pro I think I it's probably the opposite. You, I guarantee you, Nick is not cheating on his diet. I guarantee you, Nick is not cheating on his cardio. I guarantee you. That, that, that's, 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 what I'm, that's what I mean right now. So him not getting in shape, despite everything he was told by his coach, Matt Jensen, and still not getting ready. So whose fault is that? And that is why you see Matt Jensen under a lot of fire. And I have to say they better come up with a valid reason on what exactly was the reason for them pulling out of this year's Miss Olympia. And that too just five days out of the show. The second thing is, if Matt is going to be the one making the video and Nick's not ready, why isn't Matt telling us why he's not ready? And why isn't Matt taking any responsibility? Because he's his coach. So if, like you're, if your athlete's not ready... Shouldn't you have noticed that six weeks ago or eight weeks ago? Uh, I'm assuming that that decision or that talk happened much sooner than the video came out. So the longer these guys wait and they do not explain to the bodybuilding world what really happened, the more videos are going to come out and people are going to keep on speculating all the stuff. So do you guys agree with the idea of getting some form of penalty if an athlete who has signed a contract pulls out of the show when they are so close without giving any solid reason? Like, is it our business to say so? In this scenario, in this scenario, I, I think it's starting to get to that point where we're like, hey, dude, like you should tell us why the f what the f is going on here. Like yeah. we're all big fans. We're bought into you. We're in. We're supporting you. We love it. Should they be banned from competing for one whole year? What's your opinion on Nick not doing the Olympia? I think it's horrible. I, I, I think it's a cop out. I, I don't think it looks good at all. I think it's like it's, it's like a fighter ducking an opponent. Next up, we have an update from Chris Bumstead. But let's start with this picture of him and Ors Kleshinsky recreating that same picture that was taken, I believe, two years back. And who knows, maybe this is gonna be Chris Bumstead last year as a champion of classic physique and also as a competitor. So it's great to see him taking it all in when, in fact, back in 2019 and 2020, he himself told us that he would take so much pressure that he used to unfollow all of his competition up until the Olympia was over. So Han Remba let us see a glimpse of how his back is looking like in his last heavy back workout before this year's Miss Olympia. So it seems like no physique updates whatsoever from Chris Bumstead, especially in the last few weeks of this prep, which also makes this prep very different from the previous ones. So is Chris Bumstead gonna win his sixth consecutive Miss Olympia title? Well, no one dared to pick somebody else to win in their predictions, which just goes to show us the sheer domination of this man and why he is the king of this division. So if someone really acted like Dorian Yates, the shadow this year, that was Ors and maybe Brandon Kerry. So leave physique updates 
he hasn't even posted any update in a tank top. So this time the physique of Orskleshinsky, that is gonna be one of the most anticipated ones at this year's Miss Olympia. So next up we have an update from Romontino. So his calves are looking so dry. It seems like that there is no skin there. And I must say that gurus have done such a wonderful job hyping up their athletes, especially for the Olympia this year. I mean just take a look at that reaction of Chris Asito. In that recent check-in, it seems like that the man is extremely confident and his reaction is kind of funny as well. You look, you look phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Thank you. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Sign language, Brazilian sign language. <laughs> That's, <right. laughs> That's it. So in their minds, the only competition they have is Chris Bumstead. So according to them, Ramon only lost to Wesley because he did only a six weeks prep for the Arnold this year. And it is 100% guaranteed. That he is gonna beat that Arnold Ohio package, and that too by quite some margin. So Ramon does have great muscle quality. His skin is super thin. He has the best abs in classic physique. Now Chris does win the abs in time because of that insane lap thickness and those unreal quads. But if we are strictly talking about the abs only, the depth and the separation, then Ramon for sure beats him. So Ramon was able to close that gap between him and C Bum by a lot last year. So it is gonna be really interesting on how this plays out. So Chris Asito says that he's gonna have two Olympia champions this year. Andrew Jack in the Open and Romondino in Classic. Now going by Chris Bumstead's track record and how good that man really is. I have to say Andrew probably has a better shot at winning that Olympia title than Ramon. Well do let me know what you guys think. Do you guys agree or not? Now I have to say Ramon does look pretty insane. Hitting that most muscular shot in his recent update. This is a very cool picture of two of the best bodybuilders of their times. Dennis Wolf and the beast Rolly Winkler. So it doesn't really matter what they say now. They must miss the stage. The lights, the anticipation and everything. So guess what both of these guys have in common. They both have the highest placing third at the Olympia. So Rolly placed third in 2018 and Wolf placed third back in 2013. So there is one more thing common between these guys. Both of them did not retire on their own terms. It was the injury that forced them out of the competition. So Wolf had a back injury and a neck injury back in 2016. Now he did try to make a comeback in 2018, but he was only a shadow of his former self. And Rolly Winkler had a shoulder injury that hindered him from training the way he wanted to. And eventually he also retired in 2021. And I have to say that wasn't a look that Rolly is really proud of. So in this whole discussion of the past bodybuilders, there is only one question, how these guys would have done in today's lineup. Now both of these amazing guys had incredible size, but I guess they would have struggled, especially against Hadi Chopin and Derek Linsford because of their conditioning aspect. I just need to say one word, damn. Look at those feathers on Keon Pearson's quads after the last workout session with his coach, Patrick Tour. So those great genetics do not mean anything if you can't get in shape and the Olympia 2021 that was such a wake up call for Keon when he had so much hype behind him going into his Olympia debut but he ended up looking in the worst possible condition of his entire professional career. Now do not forget that Keon was also struggling mentally during that period when he first switched over to the 212. So he also sat out of one Olympia despite being qualified. But that time when him and Patrick paired up and showed up bad than ever, all of us knew, the competition knew, the fans knew that it is just a matter of time before he is crowned 212 Miss Olympia. Now I have to say Keon has been looking so damn deadly. I mean there are feathers and striations everywhere on his physique. Tell me how would anyone beat that kind of package considering that he already has one of the best shapes in the entire pro league. So a 20 weeks Olympia prep which Keon did so successfully will come down to this Friday. So if somehow Keon loses this weekend, which I don't think he will, this will most probably gonna be one of the biggest upsets of this whole Olympia weekend. So hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video and smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.